This is coming to you from John Wayne's 26 Bar Ranch in Eager, Arizona. Well, we're back, and we have a guest here. This little lady was uh, on uh, about a year ago. Her name is Nancy, Nancy Matsui, right? right. Matsui, is that the right. proper, proper pronunciation? And uh, Nancy um, is going to show us how to do Japanese food. Um, we had you on, what, about a year ago, maybe? Seems like about a year ago. About a year ago. Yes. And she yeah. did uh, something that time that um, most of us uh, really didn't know how to make up. And I think by that time we made uh, sushi. Sushi, with that western touch, oh, the green yeah, chili. Oh, yeah, with the green yes. chili in it, sure. Well, today, well, I'm not going to mess up your food for you. I'm not going to make you put chili in your food. We could, but yeah, we won't. Okay, all right. What we're going to do is we're going to get started right now because we do have a lot to do today. Because when Nancy comes on, we've got to really move because she's got lots of stuff. You know how pretty the oriental food is anyhow. Give us uh, a little lesson on how we're going to use this little gohan pot here. Okay. Gohan is actually the word for rice in Japanese. And um, no Japanese dinner would be complete without that's rice. That's right. And this is the electric cooker that's probably been around for 15 years now. And there's uh, deluxe models. Um, yeah, this is an old one. I've had this for 20 years. Here. So this is Bill's model. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Japanese cook with a rice that is a short grain and it's a fatter grain. Right. And you will find that it's a little stickier, but that's the character of the rice. That's right. And uh, the Well, it makes it easier to pick it up with the uh, exactly. hashi, too. Exactly, yes. Yeah, the sticks. And the Japanese um, cook the one cup of short grain rice with about one and a half cups of water, and that's um, good for a two-cup recipe or a three-cup recipe. What do we have going and here about? We have two cups here. We've got about two cups here, and so we have about how much water in, in this? Three cups. We've got three cups. You're right. going to get this started now, then, huh? Right, and this will yield about six cups cooked rice. Yeah. And we'll plug it in, we push down the little button here. Well, we're going to have to hook it up first and here, we'll and uh, we've got you a place to hook it up right back there. I'm going to let you hook that up. Now, let's see, is there anything else we need to know about this? Uh, oh, we had to wash it, remember? Right. We okay. Had, um, the Japanese coat the rice with the starch yeah. for mm -hmm. preservation reasons, and then we wash it through about three or four times, and it's important to soak the rice uh, to get it more tender. You so know, my wife told me that the last time I cooked my gohan, I didn't soak it, and she told me that I had made a mistake, so Nancy knows what's going on here. It's not Nancy, as tender. Nancy, so plug that in over there, cookie. and I'll try to get things going over here so that um, we can get started on this. We're going to do what now? Let's see. We're going, what's the first thing we're going to do? We'll start with the uh, cucumber salad, which is a popular item. It's called sunomono. Sunomono. Good. Aha. And there's a few ingredients that we'll be working with. All right. These you just the, get started now. These are the cucumbers that um, they were first peeled. Oh, and yeah. And then they, they're sliced. Yeah, see how she and leaves just a little bit of the green outside on that? See how pretty that is when she does that? She leaves a little bit of that green outside on there. And to get them uniform, it's nice to have a slicer. And this is a Japanese slicer. It does not have a safety guard, so you have to be careful. You have to be really careful with but those. The uh, screw on the back elevates and lowers the That's right. to yeah. get the this is, uh, this, this is kind of like the old uh, planes, you know, that we used to use in woodwork. Of course, your wife would have a stroke if you did that with the, one of these. But this will allow it to, uh, you know, to give you a different thicknesses. And like she says, you have to really be careful. There's no guard on these things. But they're a lot of fun to use, and uh, it makes such beautiful looking things. All right, go right ahead. Now, with this cucumber salad, we need to take some salt, and I just kind of pour on because we'll be washing it off. Yeah, we wash it, and, wash uh, this after we, uh, but before we eat it, we wash all right. of that off. What happens when you put in the salt, it makes it a limp cucumber. And that's what you're looking for. Makes it limp? It, it makes it limp. Water will take out the, I um, see, I see. The water, that's why we do salt steaks, because it takes out the juiciness. Sure, sure, right. right. So we'll kind of uh, massage the salt into the all cucumber. Right. 
and then it eventually you've got some water collected down right. at the bottom. Are we going to have to put water and in it now? We'll limp it a little bit, and then you can see how it's getting a little bit softer. All right. little oh, yeah, yeah, it's getting limp. Mm -hmm. Okay, now and what? We'll pour in the water. All right, let me get you some water. Oh, you have water. Okay, a little bit of water there. Now, pay attention to this because uh, a lot of us don't know how to do this type of thing. This is very interesting if you like oriental food and uh, today of course we're doing Japanese food real Japanese food all right then what do you do we'll rinse this about two times okay well I'll tell you what why don't can we do that be uh, in, during the uh, break or do we have to rinse that right now Are well you... we can rinse this right now and then we can get it into the sauce okay all right and then we'll marinate that okay you go ahead and dump that out back there okay that uh, now she's rinsed almost all of that salt off there's probably a little a little bit. Most yeah. of it has been rinsed off. Okay. And this is the sauce that you put on. What do we have in there? And there's a quarter cup of rice vinegar. And rice vinegar is very different. It's a milder vinegar. Uh -huh. And there's a quarter cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So if I you can see. remember your quarters, that's what you'll be working on. Okay. With. All right. And then we'll... Um, see how she marinate. handles those things? We'll marinate this and put it in the refrigerator because it is a cold salad. Okay, I'll put that serve. back there. Now, let's All see. Right. What's the next now, thing we're going to do? When you serve this, you do want to uh, serve it with black sesame seeds. Um, oh, I see. Just, Here, I... The white sesame seed comes in black, too. It's not sure. burnt. It, it probably and still has the husk on it then. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the difference now between... Now, see, that's what I knew too. about that. I figured she was going to cook them up over here on top of this little grate, but are, they're already inside of that. This is plenty hot right here. I'll put this in there if you'll go right over here, and uh, you can get that started. Right. Now, with the uh, sesame seeds, you kind of rotate it around, and when you hear the popping noise, it's about finished, and you'll... Um, has some aroma coming up from the pan also. Oh, all right. So it's like popcorn, huh? Kind of. Do you there, see the something's popping? Something's going. There you go. And the there we smoke. are. And that's finished. And that's it? And there's no oil in the pan. It's a dry pan. I and that's see. that's ready to go. Now, what is that? That's going to go on our salad. Right. Okay. And you can let it cool. All right. Then we the, can set that aside right, right now? The seed does get a little bit fatter once you toast it. Yeah. Right? It, so. I can't see that it popped. Oh, you know, like popcorn, it won't of course. Pop over I see. Okay. Right. It'll All just right. kind of, uh, with the uh, white right. seed, it'll look a little bit toasted. Okay. Now you can put that aside. Now what? What next do we have? Well, now we're going to get ready for the uh, sukiyaki, the main sukiyaki. dish. Sukiyaki. Uh -huh. uh, do you, do you happen to remember what sukiyaki means? Well, actually, suki used to be a tool that farmers used. I see. And yaki means to cook or fry uh -huh. foods. And a long time ago, the people used to actually cook sukiyaki on the suki, which is supposedly a spade type of a tool. Yeah, okay. A shovel, All right. I guess. All right, okay. And they would take it over to the uh, fire. fire. I see. And they wouldn't have meat in theirs because it was too extravagant of a cause. Did you bring so your whatever. shovel today? Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, God. We're a little so, more modern. <laughs> yes, modern shovel. All right, let's get so, started on this. Okay. Uh, you basically start with uh, a tray. All right. And, um, on this tray, we have some of the items, and we'll be adding to it. Here are your dry onions. Dry onions. You now, are these just regular onions? These are just plain white everyday onions. onions. Yellow, brown onions. Okay, all right. And then you have your green onions. Let's and you turn do that separate. around here so they can see that. You do separate the uh, bottoms with the tops, and then we have uh, the bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots. And Show them the this bamboo shoots. Let's put shoot. that right down here so they can see it. Now, of course, the bamboo shoot is just what. It this means, you know, bamboo, and then these little shoots come off from the bottom, kind of like a, um, almost like um, roots or something. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I kind of think of it as the bulbs of two leaves. Yeah, even. okay, that, I think that's better right. than roots. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, that's what a helpful okay. bamboo shoot Now, what else do we have? Um, and we have the meat. What is this? And this is, they said it was suet. I, um, it's easier to tell once you start frying it if it's suet. I see. Um, it's kind of like fat. Yeah, that's just okay. the fat that they the trim off right. the meat. And I've kind of arranged it into a rose shape. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and explain the Let's, meat. All right, go this ahead. This is a um, sirloin tip. A sirloin tip. And uh, what you do, um, you'll have to ask the butcher to have this cut for you. Okay. And he will um, slice it across the top of the yeah, portion yeah. where right. you'll get a good slice like this. And then he will slice it less than an eighth inch thick. 
which is kind of unusual for um, most of the audience probably. Well, most people in the United yeah. States, you know, we eat meat that thick, but the Japanese don't. Theirs is very thinly sliced. Now, let's just take you, and show one of these to them real quick there. If you take it apart, you'll find... See, she has that rolled up. The, sl the slices are And the very slices are very thin, very thin slices, mm -hmm. like that, because you're going to cook this fast, aren't right. you? Right. I mean, so we don't... There, she's not going to just sit there and boil that in that... She's going to cook it fast. All right. All right, now, so we've gone over everything. We've got the suet, we've got the green onions. We're going to use the tops, too. We'll use all of this in the tray. Okay, mm -hmm. and what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to take a little break, go sell some goods. We're going to be back in about uh, a minute or so. Don't go away. We're going to have some fun today. There's always were prepared. They survived by their speed. Killing first became the creed. But the gunfighters, coldest holsters... Howdy, partners. This is your old friend, Chili Bill, with my good buddies here, Juan Baracho and George Gabby Hayes, Jr., who just took those falls for you a minute ago, telling you that no Hollywood magic is in this. Western know-how that makes Chili Bill's chili, the authentic, bring-you-back-to-life bowl of red made with lean beef and my own championship chili blend. A real palate pleaser. Why don't you give it a try? Well, let's see. I guess I better eat. Oh, there's only one bowl here? Well, we're back, and Nancy's about ready to put everything into the wok. Now, uh, in Japan, do they call this a wok in Japan, or do you know? Well, they, this is the uh, spade, the shovel. That this is the shovel. Remember, we were telling you about the shovel, there Nancy was. This is the shovel. This Nancy. The modern version of the shovel. We're going to have to get started so, and roll it now. Uh, let me go ahead and explain okay. what's going in here. All right. This is the napa, and the napa is... Napa? Napa. Napa. It's a P and there's Chinese cabbage is another Chinese word cabbage. for it. Chinese cabbage. Okay. And this is what it looks like whole. I've used half of it for our yeah. recipe. Yeah, it's kind of elongated, and, uh, you right. know, compared to our cabbage, which is usually round. Right. But it has the leafy sections in Yeah. Now, in the that's core. already in? This is the hard core part, and we'll be adding the leafy part later I on because the okay. cooking time. Now, what about the other things we, we have, have here? We have the um, bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots. Akinoko, okay. And then we have the dry onion, which dry. has been cut into the rings. All right. And we'll be adding the rest of the ingredients. All right. And we keep each of the vegetables in their own areas, yes, not a stew I know. that's all, stu yeah, all they... stirred together. So we keep all the onions together. We keep shoving things to the side so everything, all of these ingredients will fit into mm, here. Smells good. And we'll be adding some of the sauce that I'll be talking about. Now you about already have minute. sauce in here. There's some sauce in here. I add sauce each time. I start with the onions, added sauce, added the bamboo shoots in it. Uh, right. cabbage and add a little bit more sauce. What's in your sauce? Um, well, you better tell me. My trusty recipe. Oh, there we go. See, <laughs> she uses a recipe. Couldn't do without it. All right. We have uh, one cup soy sauce, right. shoyu. Shoyu. And one cup sake. Now, sake can be substituted with sherry. Sherry. Right. And then we have three quarter cup sugar. And that's just all combined just plain together. plain sugar? Plain sugar. Doesn't have to be brown sugar or anything no, like that. No, plain old sugar. Plain old sugar. Okay. Shake it up and dissolve the sugar, and that's ready to go. Okay, and that's your sauce. That little fancy container. Oh, yeah. Uh, that has looks... sake in it, so we put it in a sake container. Okay, that's the sake there. And, and that's then, uh, the sauce, right? This is the that, sauce that's the sauce. That's okay, with the all right. Soy sauce. And then we'll go ahead Here we and go. He's... continue adding the rest of the items. Now, depending on how well you want your meat, I, I usually cook it medium to medium yeah. rare. Mm -hmm. So you add it a little bit later after some of these ingredients have gone. Right. Now, in. remember, this is the meat that's real thin cut. You know, about, right. what did you say, about an eighth of an inch, Less maybe? Less than an eighth inch thick, yeah. and it was rolled up. And, and the butcher had to do that for us today. <laughs> right. And the butcher will be, uh, offers a good service to you by doing <laughs> it for you. Uh, we'll be adding the rest of the ingredients. This is the shirataki. Shirataki. It's a Japanese yam noodle. Yam and, noodles. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you a carton that that came in. And this is the Japanese tofu. Okay. The soybean curd that some people consider the cheese. Yeah, like that's the cheese. the cheese. So we'll be adding all of these ingredients. All right, let's get going on it now. Nancy, uh, they tell me that uh, you're a teacher. That That's right? Yes, I've taught kindergartners for... About 14 years 14 now. 14 years? And I'm going to be a veteran. Well, you I don't guess look maybe that I, old. I guess maybe I could be considered a veteran at uh, Oriental Cooking since I've been doing that since I was young. That big. Yes, I know, I know your father, you know, yes. very well from a long time ago. And, um, of course, you were probably 
fairly small in those days, about 25, 30 years ago, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trying to show my age, too, huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, what are you going to add now? You see how she handles those onion. sticks? Green onion you can go on the side because it takes a little bit less cooking time, and the cooking element is t towards the base of the pot. I see. All right. So we can put that to the now edge. Now, you're putting in the uh, tips also, yes, right? Yes, all of it together. And then we'll go ahead and start adding the meat. Uh, now, you're going to you just stack all of this around? Right. With the wok, it's real nice because you can push things up on the side. It has worked in a, just a regular electric skillet also. All right. And we'll be pushing things up on the side and adding the meat in this section. And if you notice when I was uh, showing you the tray earlier, we tried to combine or lay the food in the tray so it's colorfully sure. displayed. Uh, everything that you people do is colorful. And, you know, all, all your food always looks so gorgeous, you almost hate to dive into it right. and mess it up. The Japanese try to eat with their eyes instead of their stomach. That's right. If you've heard that before, I'm sure. And we'll go ahead and... You're a... Um, don't you also teach uh, at uh, college in Phoenix? I teach at Phoenix College. Phoenix usually College. Usually in the fall sometimes. This type of cooking or what? oriental cooking, which includes Chinese as well as the Japanese. Chinese. Thing. Well, my husband had a real good background I in Chinese, see. all I of his Japanese, so I took advantage of him. Yeah, your husband's uh, from Hawaii, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and he so, taught me. And don't you do a little Korean type of cooking, too? I do some Korean. I'm not as experienced in that. I picked up some Is it of that the, much different than the Japanese? Uh, a little bit Japanese? different. It's, it's similar, like, from Gi Chinese to yeah. Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit different spices. But basically about the same. Look at the color. Isn't that pretty? All of a sudden, she starts stacking this all up around the edges here. And uh, the, these um, hashis or sticks that you're using, these are for cooking. Well, basically, they're cooking. You wouldn't need these long uh, for eating. Yeah, for eating. They're but, a little um, bit shorter. Uh, we'll show you those in a little while when we get ready to eat some of this great food. All right, go ahead and finish Before that up there. Before um, we add anything else, I'm going to add some more, little sauce more sauce to make sure all the food is seasoned well. Now, what type of a meal would this be? Would this be kind of like a, a Sunday-type meal for the Japanese? This is a special meal. I this mean, is it's, a little, yeah, it'd be yeah. like a Sunday dinner meal. Yeah. A little bit more uh, formal. Sure. But um, Everybody sits around the table, and if I remember right, uh, we serve out of this, don't we? Right. Normally this is a meal that's cooked right at the table. Sure. And as people eat the food and there's not enough, more food is added. Yeah, and, and that, if I remember right, we used to have to turn our sticks around when we went into the pot, right? Right, right. Okay. So that your germs wouldn't. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, anyway, so we'll let this cook and we'll add the uh, leafy part of the Chinese cabbage right towards the end. Toward the end. And, um, All right, now what we, all we, we have everything in now and when are you going to put those, the uh, tips in? Or are well, you we can go ahead and add them now. All right. And um, let me go ahead and explain about uh, some of those in unusual ingredients. Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you kind of explain a little bit? You know, most of the people here probably wouldn't understand uh, everything that we've put in here. Why don't you go over that one more time here and just tell us a little bit about that. Okay. The um, tofu is uh, bought in the cold section, possibly in the oriental deli section. Yeah. And you can find it. This is how it can be bought in the Phoenix so, area. I it see. So it comes in, a, comes in a package. And this package uh, is, uh, I, th I think I've found this in the uh, vegetable sections, maybe, Could, sometimes. I've seen it in the vegetable yeah. section, produce sections. And normally, when tofu is bought, you can't find a date for freshness. It's very lightly written oh, you, there. Uh, so very you can buy uh, according to the date, just like eggs yeah, and milk. Yeah. And, and this, is a cur this is actually soybeans right. that and they uh, run through some type of process. I'm not sure what it, what it is. I'm not sure either. But and it, is, uh, it, it comes out uh, looking almost like a white cheese. We, we use a goat cheese out of Mexico in, in a lot of the Mexican cooking that we do, and it looks kind of like goat cheese, really. They also talk about being kind of custardy. A custardy, yeah, well. Without the sweetness. Don't they have ice cream made out of that stuff yes. now? I think they do. Oh, foodie. <laughs> oh, <is> that <laughs> yeah, I haven't yes, tried it yet. I'd, I'd really like to try it. Yeah. All right, what's and next? And we also have the shirataki noodles. Those are the yam noodles I had uh, mentioned. All right, that's the and little noodle that, that she had here. Right. That's the sh shirataki noodles, right? right. And mm -hmm. they, they come wet. I mean, they're not uh, dried. They're in the uh, carton with water, with as water. well as the tofu is uh, soaked in water. I see. 
and you want to uh, kind of drain both of those. All right. And then we have the bamboo shoots, uh, which I showed you earlier as a whole piece. There's yeah. one cut uh -huh. out, and you can buy it in a can. Well Pack is one company. There's other companies. Yeah. But I do suggest the whole bamboo shoot versus the And then the you cut them up. One. Yeah, and then you cut them up, sure. Right, because the ones cut up are kind of flavorless. Oh, I so see. Yeah, sure. They lose some they of the juices some of and so dry. forth. Yeah, right. So we have uh, the meat, the green onion, the onion, everything's ready. Everything's here. ready. And then we'll add the uh, leafy We're going to add that pretty it. quick. Right. And then we cover it again. And how long would you say that we're going to cook this before we uh, uh, eat? Now, uh, because this really is not cooked, we can see that. Right. So we can move it towards the center. Oh, I see. Just cooking. start moving right. it toward the center now then, huh? But, All right. Um, it's basically done when your meat is to the desired flavor that you want. Okay. Uh, I, we'll probably go for another five, ten minutes for medium. All this. right. We're going to have to take a break food. again. The sponsors are calling us. And uh, we'll be back in about a minute or so, and we're going to try some of this great food. Don't go away. Caramba, somebody stole my caballo. Don't I know you from some place? That's Chili Bill Brooks. We're doing a man on the street interview, and we'd like your opinion of this. Smells like chili. That is chili. That's authentic Jack Creek chili. Where can I get some of this good chili? You'll find authentic Jack Creek chili at the Golden Carriage Pancake House in San Simeon, at Appliance and Sound in Paso Robles, and at any fine general store, emporium, or trading post. And if they don't have it, ask for it. See? Oh boy, this sure looks good. I'm ready to go, Nancy. Well, let me serve you. All right. As you know, in Japan, the man is always served first. Okay. And as you can see, each item is still in their separate places. And you will serve it the same when you uh, put it on the dish. All right. Now you can just kind give me a little bit of each in there. It'll be just fine. That's good. A little bit of noodles. A little bit of noodles. Got to put some noodles on there. Well, What's the matter? Won't they come apart? There you go. That's all right. I'll dig into those noodles in just a second here. And I see that you've uh, gotten me a beautiful set of hashis here to use myself. There you go. That's good enough. Okay, that's that's great. Oh, that's there good go. looking. That's good looking. And we've got a raw egg here too, huh? Yes, the traditionally the yeah. Japanese kind of scramble. Yeah, egg. I know. Scramble that egg up. A little shoyu in there. Let's see. This is the shoyu over shoyu. here. All right, you better uh, start serving. So, and what what we top this with? We put a little bit of. Uh, this is the the, uh, the salad. Black sesame okay, seed black sesame toasted. seed on that. Oh, and what a beautiful thing here. A little here. bit of sesame salt. I'll All right, you sesame like salt on that. Right, okay, you better salt. start serving yourself. And, uh, you know, Nancy uh, also, she does demonstrations and so forth and uh, uh, at, at home. And uh, if you want to learn how to make good Japanese food, uh, you can call 602-997-1236. She'll teach you how to make this good food. Let's eat. Oh, I can't wait. Sayonara.